Pastor Jemi, Hosti Banjo, SON, ECON, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, my brother, the Governor of Vice State, Senator Doi Diri. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Delta State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Edo State. Members of the National Assembly. I'm sorry, my very dear wife, I need to guarantee my food at home. <laughs> my very dear wife, Tim. Evangelist Ivy Tukowa, very, very top functionaries of government here, including Mr. Speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly, the Chief Judge of Delta State, the President, Custom Record of Appeal, and members of the House of Assembly, members of the Delta State Executive Council. The chairman of the Traditional Rulers Council, the first vice chairman and the second vice chairman, and other members of the Traditional Rulers Council of Delta State are fathers in the Lord who are here in good numbers. Please permit me to recognize every other person who has been invited to this session that I will not forget to recognize gentlemen of the press. With great joy and gratitude to God, I welcome you all to this commissioning ceremony. It gladdens my heart that His Excellency, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, SCN, TCON, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is here to celebrate this landmark event with us. By now, many people will probably be wondering if the Vice President has Delta roots. Yes, he has. And we are pleased to give him an honorary Delta from Oshim, the South local government, not Isoko South. We have lost count of the number of times he has been here with us on official engagement. Mr. Vice President, sir, let me once again put it on record that you are showing yourself to be a true statesman and an uncommon leader. The government and good people of Delta State appreciate you today and always. We value your friendship, partnership, and genuine interest in the progress of our state. Thank you, Your Excellency, for always responding when we call upon you. I also want to welcome my brother, Governor from Bayeso State, and the Deputy Governor of Edo State, especially. I stand here today feeling very proud of this legacy project. Indeed, I'm filled with a great sense of joy satisfaction and fulfillment. It was an arduous journey from the time construction commenced on November 27, 2017, to this momentous occasion. As you would expect, constructing an edifice like this would tax the ingenuity, resources, and patience of any government in the times we live in. It was quite demanding and exerting, and there were times we attempted to throw up our hands in despair and even question the wisdom for embarking on a project of this magnitude. The turbulence that has plagued the economy since 2017 was worsened with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, causing major financial disruptions during the construction process. However, we persevered and without the storm fully persuaded of the huge benefits agreeable to the state once the structure was completed. 
With the ministries in one central location, the state government will be saving hundreds of millions of Naira that was spent annually in renting offices all over the capital city. Coordination and synergy among ministries, departments, and agencies will be enhanced, leading to higher morale, better time management, efficiency, and greater productivity. Mr. Vice President, sir, I'm told, because some of the ministries have already moved in, I'm told that even at 5 o'clock, workers are still on their seats and they do not even want to close because of the comfort of their office. This sprawling office complex occupies a total floor space of 45,000 square meters. It is designed around five clusters with multiple floors, each cluster around a courtyard. This concept allows plenty of natural light and ventilation into the office. All the 25, 27 ministries and their commissioners and permanent secretaries are housed here, with the entire secretariat interconnected through a system of voice and data network. There are nine seminar and conference rooms, a training room, a well-furnished clinic, a crutch, a banking hall, and three restaurants in the building, while the car park has the capacity to accommodate up to 1,000 cars. Electricity supply to the Secretariat, as with other government buildings, is powered by the 8.5 megawatt Asaba Independent Power Plant, which has just been commissioned by Mr. Vice President. As already announced by my humble self, this building is named Professor Chike Edozie Secretariat. Perhaps unknown to many, Professor Edozie, the Asaba of Asaba, is a notable scholar in the field of medicine. It is in recognition of his accomplishments in the medical profession and his disposition to peace building and peaceful coexistence among the different ethnic nationalities of the state that we decided to name this secretariat in his honor. I commend the major contractor, North China Construction Nigerian Limited, the architects and project managers, and the Spavistry Ministry for their focus and diligence. This project tax their intellect and resourcefulness and they're certainly impressed with their discipline, creativity, and never say die attitude. All subcontractors, suppliers, and site workers also deserve plaudits for staying the course with us. Let me also extend my appreciation to the Office Allocation Committee for the excellent work they did in ensuring that the timeline for the commencement of government business in this secretariat was met. The ministries began operating from here last week, some of the ministries, because we needed to give time to do a final cleanup. And all other ministries will start to move in by tomorrow after this commission. The ministries began operating from here last week, and from information available to me, the workers are thrilled with their new work environment. Indeed, it is a new day for the entire public service in Delta State. It is my earnest expectation that ministry staff will be motivated to put in their best while striving to keep this facility in excellent condition always. The narrative of poor maintenance culture that the devil the civil service must give way to a sense of ownership complemented by decency and responsibility. This is imperative for the integrity of the civil service establishment and the progress of the state. I swear the chief accounting officers of the various ministries 
to institute strict measures to encourage, enhance, and enforce the culture of maintenance. It is on this note, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that I now invite His Excellency, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to commission the Professor Chike Dozier Secretary, Mr. Vice President, sir. 